Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I guess you could say this is part two of hell. There's a reason why I'm going through all this, because let's face it, Jesus went somewhere for three days when his body was dead, but his spirit and his soul lived on and went somewhere. And then after the third day, he ascended to the Father. So there is a, I think there's four words that are translated as hell. One of the most common is Sheol, S-H-E-O-L, is the common spelling. It's an Old Testament Hebrew word. It roughly translates to the uh, Greek word Hades. Now, in supposedly Greek mythology, Hades is the god of the underworld. Uh, but I don't pay attention to that stuff. But the uh, sometimes the King James translates Sheol or Hades as grave, other times as hell, a couple of times as the pit. I think it's in Isaiah 14 when it says that uh, uh, you'd be brought down to the pit. So sometimes it depends on the context. Now, if you're talking about the body, yeah, the grave. But if you're talking about the soul or spirit, then you're talking a different place. But the Jehovah's Witlesses, because they don't have any wits, uh, they'll point to the grave and say, oh, see, that's what, that's what it means. It means the grave. There's no flaming hell fire because a loving God would never do that to his, his creation. No, a loving God would flood the earth and uh, flood the earth in the days of Noah and drowned everybody except for eight, uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And that same loving God would rain fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, but he would never, he would never uh, throw his creation into the hell fire, right? But besides all that, uh, we'll cover this more later, but uh, I think. Um, hell wasn't created. Uh, the earth was created first and then hell was created later. Hell was created for the, uh, the devil and his angels, not for us. No. Originally, it wasn't created for us. So we'll cover that later. All right. So uh, sometimes the word hell is grave. Sometimes pit, and sometimes hell. And that would be Sheol, Hebrew, and... Um, oh, boy, I'm drawing a blank. Duh. Oh, Hades. Yeah, Hades. All right. And then... Uh, oh, Gehenna... I think it's spelled G-H-E-N-N-A in the Greek. Now, uh, yeah, because the New Testament was written in Greek. Now, um, then there is, well, yeah, there's Hades and Sheol. And then there's Gehenna, which is, generally considered a place of future punishment with fire. It was likened unto the Valley of Hinnom, H-I-N-N-O-M. It was south of Jerusalem. That's where they burned the garbage, dead animals of the city. They were cast into a valley. And supposedly there was always a fire going on there because, you know, you'd burn the trash. And uh, believe it or not, in times past, 
Um, well, the uh, how do I put this? All right. Well, so there's a uh, supposedly a deep valley, deep valley. Some call it a ravine. It's south of Jerusalem, like I mentioned, and where some of the Judah, Benjamin, and probably Levi, because they were the ones that lived around Jerusalem, they sacrificed their children, burning them alive to the god to, to the god Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H, which was one of the gods devils of the Ammonites. Um, this was during the time of the kings. You can read about this in 2 Kings chapter 16, 2 Chronicles chapter 28, 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, Leviticus 18. This satanic god is also referred to as Milcom and Moloch. So Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H, Moloch, M-O-L-O-C-H, um, Milcom, M-I-L-C-O-M, probably just a regional pronunciation, I don't know. But then they were using it as the uh, city garbage dump. And uh, like I say, they were burning trash there. So, which is the smart thing to do, right? But eventually they use that as a symbol of the punishment for the wicked, a place of punishment. Um, and of course, they likened it to hell. But then again, they some groups will tell you, oh no, that's hell. You know, when your body dies, they throw you in there or they bury you and then you know, there's the flames, and then that's it. So, but you know what? Jesus, <laughs> I think Jesus warned about hell more than he did about going to heaven, I, I think. So, I don't, I, I'd have to verify that, but I know Jesus warned about going to hell a lot. All right, so, Let's see, you had Gehenna. All right, so we had Sheol, Hades, Gehenna. Oh, there's one other uh, in the Greek. It's called Tartarus. This was considered the deepest abode of hell where the fallen angels that sinned were kept in chains in store for future judgment. All right, this uh, Tartarus, the lowest abyss of hell. If memory serves me correctly, I'm doing a lot of this from memory, people. I mean, you know, you, we could take this and turn this into a, a weak study. And I don't mean weak as in not strong, but I mean a weak study. I mean, like seven to ten days, just the study of hell. I mean, I could go through... Every time it's mentioned in the Bible, read the entire chapter of each time. I could turn this into a 40, 80 hour study if, you know, but that's, it would be unfruitful. Most of you and myself wouldn't want to bother doing this for that much time. But all right, in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, okay, so we're talking about the angels that sinned. Not the good angels, but the bad angels. But cast them down to hell, Tartarus, the deepest abyss of hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness. Why is it darkness? Well, it's probably physically dark because there's no... If you've ever been in a cave, I mean, it could be dark. There's no... There's no light anywhere. Uh, but the Spirit of the Lord's not there. I mean, it's spiritually dark and physically dark. 
For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, Tartarus, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And then in Jude chapter 1 and verse 6, we get a second witness. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, heaven, but left their own habitation, he, the Lord, hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, under darkness, unto the judgment of that great day. Now, there are uh, two, res well, there's two resurrections. There's the first resurrection. That's going to be the judgment seat of Christ. That's for the believers. Now, all the people here are going to be saved. Some will be rewarded greatly and others will be, uh, what does the Bible say? Something to the effect of they get in by the skin of their teeth. And then the second resurrection, that happens after the, the end of the thousand years millennial reign of Christ. That is the great white throne judgment. If you're found there, you got a problem. That's when you're going to find the lake of fire. Um, yeah, not good. No, lake of fire. I'm just wondering how long to make this Bible study. I mean, I could go into a lot of details on this. But most people don't want to spend more than an hour. I really don't. And to me, teaching about hell to me is not that important. What's more important is teaching people how to get to the other place. So, let's see. I mean, can you imagine burning your children alive? I mean, that is Satanism. Of course, uh, I think abortion is about the same thing. Uh, there was a nurse that became a Christian and, oh boy, this was, I, I read this like 30 some odd years ago and she wrote a tract or a booklet or something or other. And when she came to the Lord, she just, you know, she couldn't, there was a baby that was born before they could abort it. And the so-called doctor took it and put it in a pan of water and drowned it. And she was just so upset over this. And she quit being a, doing that kind of stuff, you know, being an abortion nurse, working in a so-called doctor's office. Whatever happened to the uh, hypocritic oath about do no harm? Yeah. But she started researching who owned the abortion clinics. Yeah, take a guess. Every single time. And uh, which is funny because I started looking into that too and her research matched mine. Yeah, which is why I believe that there are A satanic seed line. So, it's not a salvation issue, but I'll tell you what. You don't, you don't have to believe in them for them to kill you. So, all right, let's read Revelation chapter 20 real quick. All right, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the, the dragon, that old serpent. Think about Genesis chapter 3, the serpent uh, was talking to Eve. That was not a talking snake. 
No. It's a figure of speech. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Satan means accuser. How do you spell devil? You take the word evil, E-V-I-L, and you put a D, capital D in front of it. And that tells you all you need to know. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. See, people, I did a Bible study on children in the kingdom. Jesus said that in the resurrection, there we would not be we would not marry or be given in marriage. But yet there are children in heaven. Where do these children come from? Well, seems logically that uh, all the children that died in child, during childbirth or at a young age or the abortion clinic, they're going to get a chance to grow up in the thousand-year reign of Christ without the devil and his angels. They are going to be bound and bound in, in the in the pit, locked away for a thousand years, and they're going to have a chance to grow up, and eventually they'll be tested. Because uh, after the thousand years, Satan and his angels will be released. They will be allowed to go into the world and try to trick everybody into following Satan. I did a Bible study on that. Uh, Children in the Kingdom. I think it's from the book of Ezekiel. I'm not sure. But uh, because it talks about children playing with uh, an adder, which is a type of snake, and not being hurt. The, uh, the, the lamb laying down with the wolf. The lion's eating grass. You know, that hasn't happened yet. So, uh, it will happen during the thousand-year reign of Christ. And by the way, that is that is only the introduction to eternity. So, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. There's going to be 12 thrones, people. One for each of the 12 apostles who are going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. But that's another study altogether. I did a study on that, believe it or not. I've done a lot of studies. A lot of the, when I do something new, it overlaps a lot of the material I've done in the past. Uh, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not, not worshipped the beast. The beast is the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. John calls him the beast and the Antichrist. So, they had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark, 666, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Look up the Noahide laws, people. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. The penalty for violating rule number one is death. Method of execution? Beheading. Wow, it fulfills Bible prophecy. Imagine that. So, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not, not worshipped the beast, 
neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. See, there's a physical death and there, there's a spiritual death. You don't want to be part of that second death. Bad news. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Verse 7. Revelation 20 and verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, I did a study on Gog and Magog. Most Bible so-called scholars claim it's in the area of Russia. Well, guess what? Who comes from Russia? Uh, if you look up the uh, a certain group that lives in the Middle East, a lot of them come from Russia. And they don't speak Hebrew, they speak another language called Y.I. Dish. And, um, which is not Hebrew. It looks like it. Uses the same letters, but it's not the same. And uh, they are, if you ask me, they're the ones, they're Gog and Magog. So, and, sh okay, so Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed, surrounded, compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. What is the beloved city? Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Just like what happened in the days of Elijah. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived, that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, I'll guarantee you there's three entities that will be in the lake of fire and they're going to be tormented forever and ever. That's the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. All the rest, I don't know. I've had people ask me, "Are is God going to punish the unbelievers forever and ever in the lake of fire? I'm not sure. Because some things indicate yes, some things indicate that they'll be destroyed. I don't know. Verse 11. Uh, but you know what? That don't matter to me. Because what God does to the unbelieving Adam kind that's up to him. I just know that I want to take as many of you uh, and help you escape the fate that the majority of the world will have, I guess you could say. In other words, I want you to go to the non-smoking section. You know, when they say there, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, I want you to go to the non-smoking section. So, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no, no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. 
And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Wow. You ever hear somebody say, oh, our works don't matter. You know, we're, you know, you're either saved or you're not. And it doesn't matter what you do. Jesus said, why call, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say? I mean, seriously, people, you know, read the book of James chapter, chapter two. If, if you wouldn't give a brother clothing to wear in the winter who was naked and destitute and food, you're, 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 you're worthless. You really are. That's not showing love. You know, and I, and I honestly, you know, and then they say, oh, well, that's works-based salvation. No, that's love. Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you wouldn't feed a hungry person, that's not love. So you can call it lordship salvation or works-based salvation all you want. But if you wouldn't give somebody that was shivering and cold in the winter some clothing to keep them warm, James chapter 2 says your faith is vain. Vain means worthless. God has a place for you. You won't have to worry about winter time in that place. So, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. In the books according to their works. There's the book of life, and then there's the other book. I don't know what, what they call it, but if you're not in the book of life, you're in the other book. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And they were judged every man according to their works. You know, when you do, when you have a lot of works, good works, you're going to be rewarded for those. You know, people say, oh, well, all you got to do is believe in Jesus and you're saved. The devil believes in Jesus, doesn't he? The fallen angels believe in Jesus. When they were, when they inhabited a man who was possessed of the devils, they said, I know who thou art. Thou art the Holy One of God. Torment us not before the time. They know who Jesus is. They believe in him. Are they saved? I don't think so. And the sea gave up the dead and which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. There's a physical death, and then there's a spiritual death. This is the second death. Uh, this is why I wonder if our people who don't accept Christ are destroyed. Second death. I don't know. All I know is the beast, the false prophet, and the devil are going to the lake of fire to be tormented forever and ever. Everybody else, I'm not sure. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Woo. Nasty stuff, people. Don't go there. Tell them Chaplain Bob sent you to, to meet Jesus. You know, my name's not the hall pass to get in. No, Jesus is the hall. He, well, I, I don't mean that sacrament, sacrilegiously, but, you know, when you're in when you're in school, you know, you need a hall pass to go to the bathroom, right? In between classes. Well, during class. Well, 
Don't ever follow me unless I'm leading you to Jesus. That's all I can tell you. All right. In Matthew 24, Jesus was asked by his disciples, what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of this world? And I did a, well, I think a two or three hour series on Matthew 24 revealed. But then when you go to Matthew chapter 25, Jesus elaborates on what will it be like after he returns. So let's go to Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man, now these are words of Christ in red. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, holy angels, if there's holy angels, there has to be unholy angels. Oh, yeah. Satan's angels, right? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now, uh, did you ever notice, what is the symbol of the church of Satan? A goat. Did you ever notice that? Oh yeah, that is their symbol. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Huh. You ever heard of the right versus the left? Oh, yeah. Communism's on the left and so-called democracy is on the right, but we don't really have democracy. But uh, I think I want to sit on the Christ's right hand um, and all the goats can go to the left. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's what I want to hear one day. And believe me, I'm not worthy to hear those words. Jesus says in verse 35, For I was hungered and hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a, the, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I told you, the fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. Let's read that again. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. See, Adam kind was supposed to live in paradise. It wasn't until, my guess is, hell didn't even exist until after the fall of Satan and his angels when they tried to kill God in the war of heaven. Can you imagine that? What did, what did, 
what, what did God ever do to Satan to make him want to kill him in a war? I mean, really? Pride. That's why God hates pride. Depart from ye, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 42. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not, ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Woe! But the righteous into life eternal. And there's people who tell you, oh no, this is Lordship salvation. You're trying to earn your salvation by your works. Well, you know what? When you are on the left hand and told, depart from me, I never knew you, you can argue with Jesus about Lordship salvation and works based salvation. If you wouldn't give a hungry saint a meal, you are worthless. Seriously. So, what can I tell you? I don't even think hell existed until after Satan rebelled. And you can read about that in Revelation chapter 12. So, what can I tell you? And I think that was in the past. Some people will tell you, oh, that's in the future because it's in the book of Revelation. Sometimes Revelation was talking about the present, then go talk about the past, and then talk about the future. It's all over the place. Because in Genesis chapter, I think it's chapter 1 or verse 2, on the seventh day, Lord rested and everything he made was good. And that is in uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So up to this point, Satan hadn't rebelled yet. But the angels, when you read Job, uh, Job 38, I think it's Job 38. Yep, Job 38, chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Uh, the modern translation would be, Who's this that's talking about things he doesn't know anything about? Verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I created the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? And we're talking construction terms here. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Morning stars, sometimes angels are referred to as stars, and angels are called sons of God because, after all, who was their father? They were created, not born. And Adam is called a son of God, if you read Luke chapter 3. But 
Believers in Christ are not called sons of God until the New Testament. So, according to this verse, my guess is the angels existed prior to the creation of the earth. Because how else could they shout for joy and sang together when the earth was created, when you read Job chapter 38 here. But then sometime between uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse and chapter 3, Revelation 12 comes into play where there was war in heaven. Satan tried to kill the Lord. Uh, sorry, that position's already been filled. Um, yeah. So, I can't imagine that. I just, wow. And not only did he try to kill the Lord, he convinced a third of the angels to help him. I mean, imagine that. So, and you know, Satanists will tell you that Satan is actually more powerful than God. You know why? Because they say, well, pfft, Satan's still around. If God was so powerful, why is Satan still around? Hmm. Because Satan's evil serves one, uh, God's purpose in a way. If you can understand that. Even Pharaoh of Egypt during the Exodus, all the plagues of Egypt, God allowed Pharaoh to exist to do what he did to show forth his power. All right, let's read the book of uh, uh, chapter 9 of the book of Exodus, verse 9. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous murrain. Um, murrain is an old... English word for an infectious disease among livestock. Verse 4. And the Lord shall sever, separate, between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all, that is, the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land, and the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel, died not one. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he would not let the people go. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever had boils, but they do not feel good. I think I had boil a boil one time. So, verse 10. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. A blain is a sore on the skin, by the way. Uh, so, and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. Beast. Verse 11. Exodus 9, verse 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. And the Lord, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. 
You know, that's a dangerous thing. When the Lord hardens your heart, you're in trouble. And he, Pharaoh, hearkened, listened not unto them as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Now, a lot of people don't get the connection, but when you look at the plagues of Revelation, the bowls and the vials and what have you, they mimic, to an extent, the plagues of Egypt. And Egypt had a lot of different gods. And the plagues of Egypt were mimicking, uh, how do I put this? Um, the Nile River had a god. Well, when the waters were turned into blood, it was the Lord challenging the gods of Egypt. So, you know, the frogs, they even had a frog god. I think it's Kek, K-E-K. Uh, you ever seen Pepe the Frog, the so-called right-wing meme thingy? Yeah, that comes from Egypt. God doesn't, I, I, you know, I don't, I've never seen anything really good about Egypt in the Bible that I can remember. But it was uh, the Lord challenging the gods of Egypt, showing Pharaoh and his people that he was the God of gods and Lord of lords. So, verse 14, For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Listen to this, verse 16, carefully. And in very deed, for this cause, have I, the Lord, raised thee up. Who did the Lord raise up? Pharaoh. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. God raised up Pharaoh to show his power, and that the Lord's name could be declared throughout all the earth. This is why God allows Satan and his angels to live for now because they are serving a purpose. People, if we live to see Satan, well, the, the beast, the false prophet in the temple and the 666 and all that good stuff, those who take the mark of the beast, they're doomed. They're doomed. You know, when, when the Lord passes judgment on them, they can't say, well, I didn't know. Why didn't you know? Well, Lord, I didn't, never read the Bible. Whose fault is that? You know, people like William Tyndale died to give us the Bible in our language. Pe many people died to give us the Bible in our language so that we could learn about the Lord and they're too lazy to read it. But they got time to watch the movies and football games, sports, and soap operas or whatever, you know, really. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou will not let them go. Wow. So now you know why the Lord allows Satan to exist. He is serving a purpose for now. and his fallen angels. 
You want to follow the church of Satan? Go for it. But like what uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. You know, when I first came back to the Lord, because I used to believe in junior high school. Uh, I think it was eighth grade, ninth grade. That's when I believed. That, uh, but TV evangelists helped kill my faith. Well, lukewarm faith, I guess you could say. And uh, their false teachings. But when I came back, I cried out to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And Jesus Christ. I mean, there's no mistaking who that is. None. So I hope this helps a little bit on hell. Hell was not created for us. Adam and Eve were put in a paradise. And it was paradise until the war in heaven and then Satan, that old serpent, beguiled Eve. And the rest is his story. History, right? His story. You know, the Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 is his story. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.